Hi, everybody. My name is Hussein, and I'm a US Assembly Step 1 and US Assembly Step 2 tutor with Med School Coach. So today we'll be doing a question of the week, and it will be a US Assembly Step 1 question. So here's our question. We'll start by just reading through the question, um, and then we'll take a pause and let you guys think about the answer choices, and then we'll come back and determine which one's right and why the others are wrong. So here we have a five year old boy is brought to the clinic by his parents due to concern about swelling of the patient's face for the past few days. They know that the patient had a sore throat three weeks ago. They mentioned that the swelling is primarily located around the patient's eyes. They note that the boy has had seasonal allergies and sometimes gets, and sometimes his eyes get puffy and resolve with anti-allergy medication. They state that they are more concerned this time because there's more significant swelling than his previous allergic episodes. Physical examination confirms periorbital swelling and shows two plus pitting edema of the lower extremities. Analysis of the patient's urine reveals four plus proteinuria and numerous fatty casts. Your analysis is otherwise unremarkable. Uh, which of the following is the best next step in management? So I'll give you guys a moment here to pause the video and kind of work through this question. So welcome back. I hope you had a chance to think about it and think about which answer choice you think is right. And so in summation here, we have a five-year-old boy who recently had a sore throat, um, has allergies, and is presenting with periorbital swelling as well as edema. Um, your analysis also showed us four plus proteinuria and numerous fatty casts. So the answer or the question is asking us about the next step in management. So let's see what the answer choices are and what each of them are getting at and which one is right. So to start, answer choice A says, reassure the parents this is likely allergies. So given the fact that his parents specifically say that this is more significant than his previous allergic episodes, as well as the uh, significant exam findings that we see with the two plus pitting edema and the abnormal urine analysis, it's unlikely this is allergies. B is anti streptolysin O antibodies. So this would be testing for a recent strep infection, and this patient did have a sore throat three weeks ago. However, the difference is that in this patient, what we're looking at is more of a nephrotic syndrome. Given his four plus proteinuria, numerous fatty casts, and the significant edema that he has, um, it's more of a nephrotic syndrome compared to a nephritic syndrome. And anti streptolysin O antibody titers are most likely getting at the diagnosis of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, which is a nephritic syndrome. So the difference you have to keep in mind is that the nephritic syndrome would predominantly present with symptoms such as hematuria, hypertension, and potentially evidence of renal failure, such as increasing creatinine. Um, it would, if it was to have proteinuria, it would be very mild and not to the degree that we see in this patient. So with that in mind, answer choice B is most likely incorrect due to the nephrotic syndrome this patient is presenting with. So answer choice C is furosemide. So this is getting at the fact that this patient has edema secondary to the nephrotic syndrome. Um, and furosemide can be considered to get the fluid off in patients with edema. However, in this context, this is not the right approach to this patient because furosemide therapy is only uh, used in patients who have very severe edema, which is greater than three plus, and also ascites or pulmonary edema. So while this patient does have very significant um, edema, it doesn't meet the three plus category. Um, and also he doesn't have ascites or pulmonary edema, which are necessary to uh, justify giving furosemide therapy. So that is an incorrect answer choice as well. Answer choice D is renal biopsy. So this is indicated for patients with proteinuria and edema if the clinical features were to suggest anything else besides minimal change disease. However, in this patient, um, given his proteinuria, pitting edema, numerous fatty casts, and his age, the diagnosis of minimal change disease is extremely likely. So we don't need to go down the path of trying to figure out what renal pathologist is by doing an uh, invasive procedure such as a renal biopsy. And given the fact that this diagnosis is really highly given as clinical clues, renal biopsy is unnecessary and just invasive. And finally, we're left with prednisone therapy. This is our correct answer here, and it's because the treatment of choice for minimal change disease is corticosteroid therapy. And generally, patients have an excellent response to this. So with this in mind, let's get into a discussion about minimal change disease and discuss the most high yield facts that you need to know for US Assembly Step 1 questions. 
So as we saw in this vignette, minimal change disease can present most commonly in kids, and it's the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in children. It's mediated by a cytokine release, so recent infection is a common predisposing factor. Um, and in this case, it's important to keep in mind the difference between post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, which again is more of a nephritic syndrome, versus minimal change disease, which is the predominance of nephrotic symptom, syndrome, uh, symptoms, such as severe edema and the proteinuria that we saw that was four plus on his urinalysis. So like we mentioned, it also has a great response to corticosteroids, which is the reason why prednisone therapy is our best next step in management. So an easy mnemonic that I like to use to kind of keep in mind all these high yield points is to think of the letter C. So I remember minimal change disease has a C in it. And then I remember that it occurs mostly in children, mediated by cytokine release, and has great response to corticosteroids. Um, that I think is really helpful to tie in the most important aspects of this disease. But furthermore, we can also get into discussion about some other characteristics that we see, such as fatty casts and lipids that can be uh, potentially found in the proximal tubule cells. And the reason for that is from a physiological standpoint, what occurs in the body with minimal change disease and nephrotic syndrome in general is that you lose a high amount of protein in your urine. Because of that, the oncotic force or the oncotic uh, amount pressure in your blood vessels is decreased. As the oncotic force decreases in blood vessels, the liver's natural reaction to that is to try to thicken up the blood. And so in response, the liver re uh, releases a lot of lipids and these lipids and uh, fats accumulate in the kidneys. That leads to fatty casts, as well as lipids being seen in the proximal tubule cells. So that's an important characteristic that you might see as a clue on these vignettes. Um, importantly, light microscopy will not reveal any pathology, and it will reveal normal glomeruli. The common mnemonic used to memorize that is to remember that minimal change disease has minimal change. So you won't really see any difference on the light microscopy because there's only a minimal change. Once you get to more detailed or more um, zoomed in views with electron microscopy, then you can actually see potentially the effacement of podocytes. And that is characteristic. So don't get thrown off that light microscopy has normal findings because you shouldn't expect to see anything on light microscopy, but instead you'll find your pathology on the electron microscopy. So make sure to keep these high yield facts in mind, and I hope you enjoyed the question of the week this week. Thank you.